Hi, I'm Eric Watson with Great Plains Service Department. Today we're going to talk about the calibration procedures for our folding mentil drills. The drill we have today for this procedure is a 3S 4000 HD. The first thing we're going to want to do is find our seed rate manual so we can get all of our calibration formulas in order. On the back of every one of the drills, you're going to find a storage container like this. Inside the storage container should be your seed rate manual. If you can remove your seed rate manual, then you can find your desired seed in here. So you know your initial settings on the drill. Today we're going to calibrate our drill for approximately 100 pounds of wheat. So we find our wheat in our seed rate charts and we can find our row spacing of the drill, find our desired drive type, find our seed rate of 100 pounds, and if you follow it straight up, it will give us our seed rate handle setting. Now that we know our seed rate setting based out of our manual, the first thing we want to do before we put any seed in here is to make sure that our drill is calibrated correctly in relation to our cups and our seed rate handle scale. We will come over here to the seed rate handle scale Loosen up the wing nut on the bottom that holds it down. What we're looking for is 50%. So we're going to take it past 50% and then we'll bring it back to 50%. Tighten the wing nut up. This takes all the slack out of the drive so we know we're at true 50. In the cup is a fluted paddle wheel. That's what administers the seed out of the cup. What we're looking for is when the scale indicates 50, that should be 50% in the cup. So the edge of this little fluted paddle wheel should be lined up with the seam in the cup. If it is not lined up with the seam in the cup, if they're all off just a little bit, we can actually loosen the wing nut again, make our adjustment until they are lined up exactly with the seam, tighten the handle back down, then loosen up our two screws that hold our brass scale on and adjust the scale so that it indicates true 50%. If you only have one or two cups that are off and you don't have to make a whole adjustment across the drill, you can actually loosen the two screws that hold the cup to the tray and make minor adjustments there to try to fine tune each cup. Once we've got all that set up to where we know that when it is at 50, the cups are calibrated correctly and they are also at 50, then we can go ahead and set our seed rate handle to the value that we found in our seed rate book for our population we're wanting to apply, which happens to be 42. So we'll go back to our wing nut, loosen it up, take it, and we always want to go past our target and come back to it. So we'll go past 42, then we'll bring it back to it, right there, tighten the wing nut down. Now we have our adjustment made as far as our seed rate handle setting is concerned. Another adjustment you got to be careful of when you're setting the drill is on the side of each one of these seed cups, you're going to see a little tan handle. This little tan handle has three different positions that you can set it in in the field. And then it has a fourth position, which is straight down, which is a clean out feature to empty the drill box when you're done. The three settings on here control a door on the bottom of the cup that basically determines what size of material is allowed to pass through the cup. So for small seeds like wheat, cereal grains, stuff like that, you'll put it in the top notch for the smallest setting. As you get to soybeans or larger seeds, you'll put it in the second notch or the third notch, just depending on the size of the material that you're trying to apply. There's two ways to affect the seed output of this drill. With the seed rate handle in the back, which is your gate setting, and your drive types up in front. There's four different drive types. The drive types have different ratios that will speed up the drive itself. You have drives one, two, three, and four. Based off of drive one, when you move to drive two, it doubles it. When you move to drive three, it triples the rate. When you move to drive four, it takes it times five. To find our drive types, we have our sprocket array set up here. There is a decal illustration showing which drive types use which sprocket. If you'll notice on this particular drill, the chain runs in the second position. So it's not the first sprocket, it is the second one over. Now that we've established that we are currently in drive type two, but we need to be in drive type three, to change the drive types, we'll use our wrenches, 
We'll release our tension on our chains. On both of the idlers. Go ahead and put slack in the chain so we can remove our sprockets. We'll remove our linch pin, our initial small sprocket and our washer. Our sprocket needed for drive type three. This is our drive two sprocket. And we also need to remove the large one to gain clearance to be able to tension the chain back up again. So go ahead and put our drive three on or two on first out of the way. This will be our drive three that we need. Go ahead and lay our chain in place. Small sprocket. A large one. Washer spacer and our linch pin. Now that all the sprockets are back into place, we can go ahead and tension the chain by moving the two idlers away from each other. Tighten the front one down here. Tension on the rear one. There. At this point, now we have changed the drive type from two to three. Now that we have our drive type set, we're gonna to prepare to be able to turn our tire to make our catch sample. First thing we wanna do is make sure our opener subframe section is lowered down to the ground. The reason for this is so that our jaw clutch will engage so the drive will turn. With the section raised, the drive is essentially in neutral, so we're not gonna get any seed output. So we make sure our opener sections are down, refer to our jaw clutch up here. How we know that it's engaged is the two halves of the jaw clutch are gonna to come together. If they're apart, it's in neutral. When they come together, the drive is live. Once we have a live drive, we'll come over here and place a floor jack under your outer wheels, right under the center. Jack these both up so they're off the ground. Test to make sure the drive is turning. Now that we've got all of our drive types and our seed rate handle sets, we're ready to go ahead and perform a calibration. We have two methods of doing a calibration that we're gonna represent here. The first method is for drills that are made before November of 2013. Those drills, we're gonna take a bucket like is shown here. We'll take three hoses, put them into the bucket, put seed in the box, We'll go ahead and turn our tire to make sure we got seed flow established. Then we will turn it in this representation, it's gonna be 130 revolutions. We'll turn that tire 130 revolutions, which will be an acre's worth of seed. Those will be distributed in this bucket out of the three rows. We'll take the amount we collected, divide it by three so that we get an average off of those three rows. Then take that number times the number of openers on the drill. And that gives us our correct pounds per acre. Now we're gonna do a calibration with the new catch tray. First thing you wanna have is get your catch tray empty. Get your fish scale that's gonna come with the drill. You'll power your fish scale on, make sure it sets to zero. You'll notice on the tray, there's three different holes in the back side of it to help balance it when you do your weight sample. We wanna get a weight of the empty tray. So we'll hook our fish scale in This one happens to be 3.3 pounds. Every one can vary a little bit, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to weigh your empty tray ahead of time. Take that figure that you got of your tray weight and write it down so you don't forget it for future reference. Now we're gonna take the tray, we're gonna install it on our, on our cups on the drill, and we'll show you what it looks like installed. Now that we've got our tray in place, we're gonna go ahead and do our static catch test. We've got our wheat seed in here. 
We're gonna go up front now, we're gonna turn the tire 130 revolutions, and then we'll come back here and see our outcome of what we've caught. Now that we've done our 130 tire revolutions, we wanna pull our catch tray off and see what our sample is. We'll grab our fish scale, make sure we have it zeroed out, find the hole on here that's gonna hold it halfway level so we don't spill our sample. And according to this, we've got 11.3 pounds. So what that tells us, with our 11.3 pound sample, we remember that the, the catch tray itself weighs 3.3 pounds. So we'll get our calculator out. We'll take our 11 pounds minus our 3.3 pounds. That'll give us an eight pound sample of test wheat. That eight pounds that we've got in here is an equivalent of one acre's worth of seed off of five rows. So what we'll do is we'll go to our calculator and we'll take that eight pounds divided by five, because we caught five rows, that gives us an average of 1.6 pounds per cup per acre. So we'll take that 1.6 times 63, which is the number of rows that are on this particular drill, that gives us 100.8 for a total calibration. So the way the drill is set currently, we're gonna be putting on 100.8 pounds to the acre of wheat. Now that we know the drill is set correctly for the rate we're wanting, which is 100 pounds per acre, we've got two different ways of doing this like we discussed earlier. We can do an, a static catch test at the farm or we can do an infield test. The static test, there again, is when we're turning the tire. This particular drill, because it's a 40 foot drill, we're gonna turn that tire 130 revolutions. That's the equivalency of one acre of travel distance in the field. If you're doing a field test where you're going to hang this on the drill and actually pull it through the field, you are going to travel 1,089 feet in this representation for this drill. That's the same equivalency of turning the tire 130 revolutions. Now that we've went through the different procedures as far as a static calibration test and an infield test traveling a known distance of one acre, I can show you a different method that we've come up with if you have internet access via smartphone or laptop or a tablet in the field, we have a link on our website that is a drill calculator that walks you through the steps, basically just a data entry using our infield test, but we're gonna travel instead of an acre, we're gonna travel at least a 500 foot course. The farther the distance traveled, the better the accuracy will be. Now we can zoom in on the laptop and I can show you on the website the procedure for the calculator. As you can see on the laptop here, we're going to want to go to greatplainsag.com. Once we're at our home site, we'll go over here and click on manuals. Then we're going to go over here to Mintil drills. Now that we're on our mintil drills, we're gonna roll down to our three section drills because this drill happens to be a 3S4000 HD. There's our two section. There's our three section. So we'll get into our 4000 HD right here. Now you'll notice at the bottom, we have all of our parts and operators and seed rate manuals. And right down here at the bottom is our drill calibration calculator. We'll click on that. That will open up our link. You pull this up so you can see it a little better. Now we need to select our machine, which is a 3S4000. And we move on to our row spacing, which in this example is seven and a half inches. Our seed rate handle setting that we established earlier was 42. Our number of rows collected is five. Our calibration distance. This is where we need to drive at least a 500 foot course in the field. But since we did a field calibration already and we traveled 1,089 feet, which would be an acre, I'm gonna go ahead and enter that value, 
89 feet of travel distance. The amount of seed we caught was eight pounds, zero ounces. Our desired seed rate is 100 pounds per acre. And we hit calculate and it tells us we're about right on the money. We've got 63 rows, the acres, we traveled almost a full acre. It's got 0.99 on here. We need to have our seed rate handle set on 42. So if in the case that it was off a little bit, it will tell you in there as far as if you need to move your seed rate handle setting to a different one, or if you need to change drive types, it will call all that out on the website to help you set your drill. This is just another function that like say, it's a little easier to do the calculations because it's all done for you on the link on our website. And again, that website is greatplainsag.com. Now that we've gone through all of our procedures for calibrating the drill, both static and infield, the things you wanna keep in mind the most are all of our seed rate charts that we have that come with the drill and that are on our website, they are to be viewed as a starting point no seed rate chart is going to be 100% accurate. That's why we always suggest you doing a calibration, regardless whether it's a static calibration or an infield calibration. That way we can assure that we're putting on accurate rates. We're not over or under applying. Different things as far as seed weight, seed size, humidity, seed treatment, all are going to play a factor in the outcome of your drill as far as what you're applying. One thing to keep in mind is all of our seed rate charts are based off of clean, untreated seed. So anything, you know, if your seed is not, hasn't been cleaned properly, if it's not that well, you know, graded as far as different sizes, if it has different treatments on it, that's all gonna affect how it's gonna flow through the cups and it's gonna be probably a different rate than what the chart shows. So the calibration is a very important procedure. Now we've showed you before how a perfect scenario works out. If everything is just in a perfect world where your seed rate chart is 100% on, the seed matches the, the same density and size of the seed that we tested with when we established the chart, what we're gonna try to show you here is a representation of what's gonna happen if it's not all perfect. If your seed happens to be a little heavier, a little lighter, has a treatment on it, and it doesn't come out just exactly like the seed rate chart says, the calculator online is going to tell us how to correct for that. If you'll notice on the calculator here, we've already got it set up like we did before. We've got our 3S4000. We've got our seven and a half inch row spacing. We've got our seed rate handle. It's still set on 42. We're still collecting five rows of seed. The distance we traveled in the field is 1,089 feet which is the same as one acre. So now we're gonna put in here that we caught seven pounds, four ounces. And our desired target, just like before, is 100 pounds. And we'll come down here and hit calculate. Now you'll notice off to the side, our results, we caught six or sit for a drill with 63 rows. We traveled roughly one full acre in the field. Here's the amount that we caught. So it's telling us that we need to move our seed rate handle to 46 to be able to put on that 100 pounds per acre target that we're looking for. This online calculator tool is originally designed for infield calibrations. However, it can be used in a static setting in the driveway or on the farm. Keep in mind, you're gonna to wanna to enter one acre's worth of feet traveled per the drill that you're using. So in our representation, our drill, it's gonna tell you to turn the tire 130 revolutions for one acre. So we don't enter 130 revolutions, we enter one acre's travel distance, which is 1,089 feet. Every drill is gonna be a little different, whether you have a 26 foot drill, a 30 foot drill, a 40 foot, a 50 foot, we're gonna put all those representations on the screen here for you to use as a reference. Keep in mind, all this is gonna be in your seed rate manual that will give you a, the factor of how many rotations of the tire equals one acre's worth of travel distance. You can use this to aid you in setting up and using the online calibration tool. Keep in mind, 
if you run the, the calibration test and it tells you to make an adjustment, before you make that adjustment, be sure and go back and once again double check to make sure your drive type is right, your seed rate handle is set right, and you did travel the one acre of distance that you entered into the calculator. Make sure all that is correct before you go ahead and make any adjustments on the drill. And then after you've made sure that that is correct, go ahead and re, you know, make your adjustment and then rerun the calibration again to assure that everything is right on the money and you're gonna not over or under apply. We hope that you find this calibration video helpful and it will lead you on the right path as far as doing proper calibrations and getting accurate seed outputs on your drills. From all of us here at Great Plains, we appreciate your business and look forward to doing business with you in the future.